Howdy! My name is Nonat, and welcome to part two of the Inventor Deep Dive for Pathfinder 2e. Now, I know how much you guys love me splitting these deep dives into two parts, but, uh, these classes are really complicated, okay? Just be grateful this one wasn't two and a half weeks after part one, and I decided to make it the next video. Again, splitting these into two parts typically isn't a forethought kind of thing, but once I've been recording for over an hour and I haven't gotten to the feats, it's a pretty good sign it's gonna need to be split up. But at least it's pretty easy to split up, as class features and feats make two really good different videos, and today, of course, we're going to be talking about the feats available to the inventor from levels 1 to 20. But before we start talking about it, you know we got a sponsor! The sponsors for today are Moonlight Maps, and they're really cool-looking Kickstarter for Atlas. This is a big binder of tabletop battle maps that not only gives you a bunch of different options for maps, but each map is actually double-sided with two different takes on the same environment. Maybe you'll have day and night, maybe you'll have fire and ice, all these different ideas that you have within the binder. This project has already gotten an insane amount of backing, but there's still more stretch goals to hit. Already, this is coming with additional encounter cards, which may be balanced for 5th edition D&D, but the flavor and everything that makes up the context is just as applicable to Pathfinder 2nd edition. I would describe this project as 95% system agnostic. Not only are these maps dry erasable, so you can draw with marker and wipe it off, but they also have static cling stickers for different set pieces to truly customize the map to what you want. I know that's always my biggest complaint when using a battle map, is when there's set pieces that aren't exactly where I want them. Well, with these static stickers, you can take them, place them on the map, take that wagon, put it sideways across the road, use it for that encounter, and then take it off and put it away to use another day. It's fantastic. They just recently hit their 100,000 euro stretch goal to unlock monster tokens to come with the binder, but I really think in the last 10 days of this Kickstarter, they can hit that 150 pound euro? Pounds? I'm American. I seriously think they can crush this next stretch goal, and I really hope they do, because they're going to be releasing an entire adventure alongside this project called Undying Love. It sounds super cool, and it says it's going to be a digital PDF adventure that will be coming regardless of your tier of pledge. So head over to Atlas using the link in the description and the pinned comment below, and support this Kickstarter. Get yourself some cool maps, get some encounter cards, get some monster tokens, tokens, and let's bump them up over so we can all get a really cool looking adventure. Thank you so much to Moonlight Maps for sponsoring the channel. Let's talk about inventor feats. The first feat is actually incredibly simple, thank you. Level 1's built-in tools. You pick two sets of tools that you currently own. Healer's tools, thieves tools, uh, other tools, I guess a climbing kit? You actually install these two sets of tools into your innovation, and as long as you are wearing, wielding, or next to your innovation, you have access to those tools. They don't take up space in your inventory, they don't count for bulk, it's pretty great. What's really important about this feat is that usually you can only wear one set of tools for quick access, which will usually be healer's tools, but the inventor can have up to three different sets of tools available for quick access at any time. The one they're wearing, and the two that are built in. This is not to be overlooked. Explosive Leap is an unstable action, but it's also my favorite level 1 inventor feat. For one action, you launch yourself 30 feet. This is incredibly useful in roleplay and exploration especially. I've played an inventor, and when we had to cross a 15 foot gap, I only had an 8 strength score, so my athletics to long jump wasn't great, but I could just explore explosive leap across and then spend a few minutes fixing my <laughs> fixing my innovation. Sure, it slowed people down a little bit, but it was really useful and I didn't even have to make that athletics check. I just got to blow myself across the gap and it's pretty useful. Keep in mind, you can go 30 feet in any direction. So you can go 30 feet straight up with this. Keep that in mind. That is huge. Haphazard repair. For one action, you take the repair action on your innovation to restore some hit points and possibly fix it from being broken. Especially for the construct innovation, that's just a quick way to heal them, almost like battle medicine. 
This is really impressive as the repair action usually takes 10 minutes and this only takes one action. However, it does have the unstable trait. Keep that in mind. I'm so glad they kept this feat name from the playtest. No, no, I created you. As a reaction once per minute, if your construct companion would become confused or controlled, you get to attempt to counteract the effect with your crafting modifier. And you're an inventor, your crafting skill is going to be through the roof. I just love this, you know, your construct turns on you in confusion trying to lash out at you and just, No, 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 no! I created you! You can't hurt me! And then they go back to normal, it's great. Prototype Companion. If you are a weapon or armor inventor, you can gain a Prototype Construct Companion. Keep in mind, however, you do not get to add any of the modifications from the class features to this companion. This is just a way for someone to get a clockwork animal companion without being specifically a construct inventor. Tamper is another really cool feat I'm glad they kept from the playtest. For one action, you make a crafting check against a target's reflex DC, and it has a different effect depending on what exactly you target. Should you critically succeed the crafting check and you target their weapon, they take a minus two circumstance penalties to attack rolls with that weapon until they spend a single action to reaffirm their grip. It's effectively a disarm check. What's important though is that this lasts forever until they spend that action to fix it. If you normal succeed, however, it only lasts until the start of your next turn. Should you target the enemy's armor, they become flat-footed and take a minus 10-foot speed penalty, again, until they either interact to fix it or permanently on a crit success or until the start of your next turn on a normal success. Should you crit fail, as usual, something explodes and you take fire damage equal to your level. Variable Core changes the Explode action. You can pick Acid, Cold, or Electricity, and whenever you use the Explode action, you can choose to deal Fire damage or the new selected type of damage. An interesting tidbit is that if you spend a day of downtime to change Variable Core, you can also change your Offensive Boost class feature for the same day. Kind of weird. At second level, we have Collapse Armor. Only for the Armor Inventor, you can don and doff your armor for a single action. Even if you have the big power armor, it's still, as long as it's on your body, for one action, you collapse it into a single bulk package, and as long as you're holding that package for one action, it unfolds onto you. The bulk doesn't actually become one, it is lowered by one. So if your armor was already bulk one, it actually becomes light bulk instead. Collapse Construct. Your construct companion becomes a small package similar to Collapse Armor. This package has a bulk of two if you have a small companion, four if it's medium, and eight if it's large, but it specifically states that this package does have wheels and can be easily dragged behind you like one of those old little red wagons. Keep in mind though, when dragging your construct in this way, your movement speed is halved. What's fun about this from a roleplay perspective is the inventor does not need to spend this action to collapse it. Even if the construct is 50 feet away from you, you can command your construct to collapse into its compact form, potentially confusing some enemies if they're less intelligent or have no idea what they're looking at. Reverse Engineer is a very powerful feat for the inventor. You gain a plus two bonus to crafting checks to discern the formula of an item. And normally when you do this, it destroys the item to learn the formula. However, if you critically succeed your crafting check, not only do you get the formula, but you also put the item back together and you can keep it. Hilariously, this even works for potions and stuff, and I have no idea how. Somehow, because you're a crazy smart inventor, you can separate the ingredients, learn what they all are, and put them all back together. <laughs> and honestly, the main reason I would take this is because you can roll crafting instead of thievery to disable traps and pick locks. Who needs a rogue? I would like to regale you with the first sentence of the feat, Searing Restoration. <clears throat> They told you there was no way that explosions could heal people, but they were fools. Fools who didn't understand your brilliance! Your innovation explodes, and this minor contained explosion both cauterizes wounds, <coughs> help, 
<coughs> oh my god, I'm dying. Both cauterizes wounds and ignites medicinal herbs to create healing vapors. You can heal yourself or an adjacent living creature for 1d10 hit points and make an immediate check to get rid of persistent bleed damage. At third level and every odd level after that, the healing goes up by 1d10. And while we're talking about scaling numbers, I would like to bring attention to my explosion explanation from last video. Thank you to everybody who called me out in the comments because this was the biggest mistake. Explosion's damage goes up at third level and every level thereafter. I'm so used to everything in the game scaling every other level that I just auto-filled it in my brain. But yes, explodes damage, becomes 3d6 at level 3, and then is always a number of d6 equal to your level. That's huge! For Searing Restoration, if you have a Construct as your innovation, it can heal someone adjacent to itself, but it cannot heal itself with this action. Also, it's unstable. Be careful. At level 4, Advanced Construct Companion advances your companion just like an Advanced Animal Companion. You also, like a Ranger or Druid, get the ability to, even if you don't give your companion an action that turn, they still get a free one at the end of your turn. Diving Armor. The Armor Inventor gets a swim speed. Simple as that. Really good. Also, you can breathe underwater. This is fantastic. Dual Form Weapon is honestly super cool but a bit too strong in my opinion. I'm glad they waited until level 4, because this is so overpowered, it is a must-take for weapon inventors. You pick a common weapon to which you have access to, and you pick an entire new set of modifications for that weapon. From now on, your weapon innovation can switch between two completely distinct weapon innovations, modifications, and all. This means if you want, you can have a crossbow with a bunch of ranged weapon modifications and, for two actions, shift it into a greatsword with big melee damage modifications and back again. Sure, two actions is a big tax for doing this, but this is insane! Now, they did add some things that limit this and make it a little bit weaker. First off, your item always has the bulk of the heavier of the two weapons. So even if you have a greatsword and a knife configuration, it's still always going to be the bulk of the greatsword. Also, you need to apply runes to each one separately. <laughs> The final thing to mention is that the two actions required to switch forms do not need to be consecutive. For example, you can spend the last action on one turn and the first action on the next turn to finish the reconfiguration. However, after spending the first action, your weapon is no longer usable as it is between states and is not really a weapon until you spend that second action. Gadget Specialist at level 4. You can craft two temporary gadgets per day, and you get the formula for three common gadgets of your level or lower. Once you're a master in crafting, you get three more formulas, and you can make one more per day, and same thing happens when you hit legendary in crafting. I'm not going to be able to talk about this much, as I personally haven't read the gadgets, and I'm not going to be going over them in this video. If you would like me to, in the comments, let me know if you'd like to see a video covering all the new gadget items that were released in this book. I would be happy to do that. Similar to snare crafting, the gadgets prepared in this way don't have any resale value and fall apart at the end of the day. Megaton Strike is basically power attack, but given that inventor flair. For two actions, you make a melee strike and it deals an extra die of damage. Once you're level 10, it's two extra die, and level 18 is three extra die. What's very important, and again, I don't know if this is a typo or not, but this does not count twice towards your multiple attack penalty, which means if you Megaton Strike and then Normal Strike, it's only minus five. With the Weapon Innovation, you Megaton Strike with that weapon. With the Construct Innovation, you Megaton Strike with your Construct. And if you are an Armor Inventor, you pick one weapon at the start of the day, and you can Megaton Strike with that weapon. What's interesting is Megaton Strike has an optional Unstable trait. If you apply the Unstable trait to Megaton Strike, you deal one additional weapon damage die. Now this does not scale at higher levels, but it'll always add one more die of damage to your attack. 
Also, also, this does not state melee strike, which means you can make a megaton strike with a longbow, but only if you are a weapon inventor. Armor inventors are restricted to melee, weapon inventors have their free choice. Clockwork Celerity is really cool. At level 6, the inventor can make themselves quickened for one turn. This extra action can only be spent on a specific way, but that depends on your innovation. What's cool is that this has the unstable trait, so if you make that DC 17 check, you can speed yourself up again and again so long as you keep making that check. If you're an armor inventor, you can use the extra action only to step or stride. If you're a construct inventor, you can only use the extra action to command your companion, basically giving them two actions and you three actions on the same turn, easily the strongest of the options available here. And for the weapon inventor, it's definitely most useful for a reload-based ranged inventor, but the extra action can only be used to strike or to reload. Oftentimes, this extra strike isn't that worth it because you can already attack once or twice on your turn, and attacking at minus 10 isn't great, but for something like a crossbow, this allows you to attack, reload, attack, reload, all on the same turn, which is massive. Construct Shell is really cool. You have modified your construct innovation that, if you are riding it, you are given cover. Now this is only lesser cover, so it's only a plus one to armor class, but this is against all attacks, even melee attacks that target you. The final bonus is that while riding your Construct Companion, if it uses the Explode Unstable action, it ignores you. That's really cool, so you can ride your Construct into battle and detonate it in the middle of a bunch of enemies. It's just a really cool way to envision you giving yourself like a glass dome pilot seat on top of your Construct. It's so cool. Megavolt. The inventor already has Fireball. Let's give them Lightning Bolt too. For two actions, all creatures in a 20-foot line make a reflex save against your class DC. This is a basic reflex save against 3d4 electricity damage, not bad, and this does not have the unstable trait, so it can be used every single turn. But if you give it the unstable trait, you can extend the range to 60 feet or 90 feet, and once you're level 15, you can extend it all the way to a 120 foot line of electricity. Oh, also, when you make Megavolt unstable, it deals d12s instead of d4s, and this damage scales by 1d4 at level 8, 10, 12, and every even level so far and so forth. And also, I read this one! This one is every two levels thereafter. I know Explode is every level, but this is every two! <laughs> Visual Fidelity actually does quite a bit. First off, you gain low light and dark vision if you didn't already have them. Also, invisible creatures are only concealed to you as you have all this tech that allows you to see them, albeit as blurred translucent shapes. Finally, if an effect would blind you, that effect needs to make a counteract check against your class DC. If it fails, you're not blinded. This feels kind of weird as it feels like your crafting skill should counteract the effect blinding you, and your class DC is going to be way lower, so it's a little unfortunate, but it's still a great feat to defend your eyesight. Gigaton Strike is a direct upgrade to Megaton Strike, and when you use Megaton Strike, the target must make a fortitude save against your class DC, and if they succeed or fail, they get pushed 5 or 10 feet back. And if they crit fail, they're pushed 20 feet back, but keep in mind this feat is actually not that great, as it only applies to the unstable version of Megaton Strike, not the normal version. Incredible Construct Companion. You advance your companion to Incredible. Manifold Modifications just gives your innovation a second modification from the initial list. Don't overlook this. Those initial modifications are great, and especially for something like a weapon or a construct, this can let you tack on even more traits onto the same weapon. Also, also, combining this with Dual Form Weapon basically gives you two more initial modifications as each set of weapon gets its own set, which means they both benefit from Manifold. Overdrive Ally. If you are already in Overdrive, you can spend one action to throw some of your tech at an ally within 30 feet, and they gain the effect of your overdrive, whether this is half your intelligence mod on a success, or your full intelligence mod on a crit success overdrive. 
Now this only lasts until the end of their next turn, and they do not gain the bonus damage from the class features that upgrade Overdrive. But still, this will give your ally 2 to 5 bonus damage on all their attacks. Flurry Rangers with this will be terrifying! Ubiquitous Gadgets upgrades your Gadget Specialist, and you can craft 2 more gadgets per day. Starting at level 14, you can also select this feat again to make even more gadgets. Can we just talk about how great the writing is under the inventor feats? Level 10's distracting explosion. As a reaction, if a creature within your reach uses a concentrate action, <clears throat> your enemies think they can concentrate on something else while you're nearby? Oh, you'll give them a distraction, all right. Oh, but they did the thing where they said all right and not all right. Isn't A-L-R-I-G-H-T, that's a word, right? I keep seeing all right, but that means it would all be on the right side. Whereas all right is like, yeah, you know? Am I crazy? That irks me. But yeah, this is the inventor's attack of opportunity, and if you have a construct companion, your companion gets this instead of you and uses your reaction to do it. What's really cool, though, is you can give this attack the unstable trait. And if you do, if the attack hits, it automatically disrupts the triggering action. Not a crit, a hit. If someone is casting a spell and you attack them with the unstable distracting explosion, their spell's gone. That's insanely powerful. Electrify armor. For one action, you electrify your armor. If anybody hits you in melee with a non-reach weapon, they take 1d4 electric damage. And if you're level 15, it's 2d4 instead. Now this is an incredible unstable function. If you make this an unstable action, they deal d12s instead of d4s, and it lasts for a full minute rather than one round. That's incredible. At level 15, to just automatically deal 2d12 damage back to attackers, no saving throw, no check, just automatically for one minute, that's amazing. Helpful tinkering. For one action, you make a crafting check on one of your adjacent allies' weapons, and if you succeed, they gain your offensive boost for one minute. You don't lose yours either, they also get it. Now keep in mind, this is against a high DC for your level. Once again, if you don't know how to set DCs, check out this video, but a high DC is going to be Difficult. For a level 10 character, that's going to be somewhere around 30 to 32. Oh, and the crit fail effect is amazing. You install the offensive boost wrong, so every time your ally attacks with that weapon, they take damage equal to your offensive boost feature. Suddenly, your ranger with a dagger is taking 1d6 acid damage every time they attack someone. That's just funny to me. Lock on. Specifically for the construct inventor, for a single action you pick a single creature. So long as your next action is to command your construct, your construct gets a plus two circumstance bonus to attack rolls against that creature until the end of the turn. This increases to plus three if you use two actions to lock on. If you're legendary in crafting, it gives a plus four until the end of the turn. So for two actions, you target a creature with lock on, you use your third action to command your construct, and your construct gets two actions, both to attack at plus four. That's nuts. Boost Modulation at level 12. You pick two additional damage types from the Offensive Boost class feature, and for a single action at any time, you can switch to one of your three available damage types. Really good for not knowing what you're going to go up against. If your weapon happens to also have the Modular trait, you can switch the damage type of both your Offensive Boost and the modular trait both at the same time for a single action. So you can go from piercing and fire to bludgeoning and electric like that. Very nice. Contingency gadgets. Rather than creating all of your daily gadgets right during daily preparations, you save one of them to be whatever you want. For a single action, at any time, you can pull any of your formula gadgets out. If you're legendary, you can do this twice per day. This is like that general feat I don't like, but I like this one better because it's like, you know, at least you're really smart and maybe you did have the forethought for this. I like it. Deep Freeze. 
For two actions, you spray a target within 60 feet with a jet of cooling liquid. It doesn't say what it is, but I'm guessing it's supposed to say the reflex save is against your class DC. If they crit succeed, nothing happens. If they normal succeed, they take cold damage equal to half your level and a 5 foot speed penalty for one round. A fail is cold damage equal to your level and a 10 foot speed penalty, and a crit fail is cold damage equal to double your level, slowed for one round, and a 15 foot speed penalty for one round. Not too shabby, but again, it's against your class DC, which isn't all that high. And if you give this the unstable trait, you can make it a 60 foot cone instead of a single target. All creatures in that cone get to make their reflex save, and the damage is doubled before the reflex save. So now it's dealing damage equal to double your level. If you're level 12 and someone crit fails their reflex save, they're taking 48 cold damage. And upon reaching level 15, you can increase the range to 90 foot cone if you so choose. Gigavolt is a direct upgrade to Megavolt, and even if your Megavolt hits a wall, it still gets to go its full distance by bouncing off in any direction you choose. Now you cannot hit the same creature multiple times this way, but this does let you make some really cool trick shots banking off walls and hitting multiple targets in something like a hallway. Very fun. And shared overdrive. The first time you overdrive an ally, they gain the bonus damage for the rest of your overdrive, not until the end of their next turn. Additionally, you can still share overdrive with more people, but anything past the first one goes back to the until the end of their next turn ad time limit. Explosive Maneuver, specifically for the Weapon Inventor, if your last action was a successful strike against a target, for your next action, you can grapple, shove, or trip them at the same multiple attack penalty. Now there is a restriction on this. You can only select a maneuver of which your weapon has the trait. If your weapon only has the trip trait, you can only trip with Explosive Maneuver. The biggest downside here is that it doesn't let you use your crafting check to trip them, but I understand as that might be actually a little overpowered. Paragon Companion. Your construct companion is as strong as it's gonna get. Soaring armor for the armor inventor. <clears throat> You've managed to free your innovation from the bonds of gravity. You can fly as fast as your land speed. Simple as that. Mwah. Beautiful. Unstable redundancies is fantastic. As a free action, if you would be rolling an unstable flat check, you choose to succeed. Now you can only do this once and then you need to spend 10 minutes repairing your construct to do it again, but this effectively gives you a guaranteed two unstable actions per combat. This can sort of be compared to the feats that allow you to refocus multiple points at once, but this is still really good. What's really nice is that the 10 minutes spent repairing after failing an unstable action also fixes unstable redundancies. And if you get lucky and on that second action roll 17 or higher, well hey, that's three unstable actions in one encounter. That's pretty freaking insane. Just the Thing is hilarious and has the most flavor of maybe any feat I've ever read. Once per hour, when you would make a skill check, you instead use crafting, and you describe, personally, a completely unique device you've never used before, but have for the situation that allows you to use crafting. An example it gives that I love is, instead of rolling diplomacy to persuade a dragon, you pull out a device that exudes an aroma that dragons find delightful and pacifying, and then use crafting instead of diplomacy to talk to them. This is hilarious. My biggest problem with this, and a line they actually didn't add, is that the device should likely fall apart upon being used. Because otherwise, once you have this nice dragon smelly thing, why can't you use it again within the hour? I obviously mechanically it's balanced to only be once per hour, but you have the item canonically now. Why can't you use it on the next diplomacy check while you're still holding it? 
I think it should specifically state these are one-time use objects, kind of like a talisman. Otherwise, there's a really big disconnect there from what's going on. Persistent Boost. Your offensive boost gets a permanent upgrade, along with its normal damage it deals. It also inflicts 1d8 persistent damage of the same type. That's massive. That's also really interesting that I think this is one of the only ways to inflict something like persistent bludgeoning damage. Name one other thing in the game that deals persistent bludgeoning or persistent slashing. You failed to account for this! is another awesome feat, but has the same issue as just the thing. As a reaction, if you are targeted with an attack, you can instead pull something random out of your pack, and your opponent has to attack your crafting DC instead of your armor class, which is going to be way higher. There's a few things to note about this. I've gotten feats like this wrong in the past, and I thank you in the comments for correcting me. If you are targeted by an attack and you use this reaction, things like flat-footed and stuff don't affect you. If you're afflicted by clumsy, that would give you a minus one to armor class. That doesn't matter because you're not using your armor class. Same thing applies to flat-footed. Flat-footed lowers your armor class. It doesn't lower your crafting DC. In that same vein, if you are stupefied, that will affect this because it affects intelligence-based skills and DCs. There's also no cooldown for this. You only get one reaction per round, but this means that for one attack per round, you're using crafting instead of your AC, which is insane. And this one is honestly not quite as hard to explain. Because you're pulling these random devices out and using them to flavorfully deflect an attack, it makes sense that they would likely be destroyed in the process. An example it gives is pulling out a lightning rod to absorb an attack that would deal electricity damage, and that would likely overload the lightning rod and maybe cause it to break. That's easier to explain than just the thing. Devastating Weaponry at level 18 for the Weapon Inventor. For three actions, you make a strike against every creature within 30 feet of you. Yes, even if you are using a melee weapon. The melee weapon is described as leaving your hand, flying around, attacking everything, and returning to your grasp. And, of course, all of these attacks are at the same multiple attack bonus, so they're all at your max if it's the first thing you do. The biggest problem, and I guess I understand why, is if your weapon requires reloading of any kind, like a firearm or a crossbow, you can't use Devastating Weaponry, and that's kind of disappointing. It'd be nice if you could flavor it so you fire upwards and it like splits and sort of like the fighter Reign of Arrows feet just splits and attacks everybody, but you still need to reload after. I think that would have been fine rather than completely restricting people from even using it in the first place. Engine of Destruction is pretty much the same thing, but better for the Construct innovation. For three actions, your Construct strides and then attacks everything within 30 feet of it with a plus two to hit. Now, this isn't quite as nutty as it may sound on paper, and I was honestly overreacting a bit before, before I scrolled down and checked, but even a Paragon Construct Companion only gets expert proficiency with, uh, dogs outside. Our neighbor just got a new little dog, and he's adorable, but he's also really loud. So yeah, this basically gives it the same accuracy as your normal attacks. This also means that the uh, feat from before that gives it a plus four to hit also isn't as crazy as I thought because they max out at expert. Negate damage is really good, and they made it way better than it was in the playtest. As a reaction for the armor inventor, if you would take damage, you can reduce it by 15. Now again, this uses your reaction, so you can only do it once per round, but yeah, once per round, reduce damage by 15. And if you give it the unstable trait, reduce the damage by 50. And remember, if you took the feat that lets you do an unstable action for free, you can just mitigate 100 damage a round. And even once you've used it, you can still use the 15 damage reduction. This is incredible. All right, we're down to it. Let's talk about level 20 feats, starting with full automation, which has a different effect depending on your innovation. 
This actually isn't all that exciting, it's just a better version of Clockwork Celerity from level 6. You are permanently quickened. If you're an armor inventor, you can only use it to step or stride. If you're a construct inventor, you can only use it to command your construct. And if you're a weapon inventor, you can only use it to strike. For weapon inventors, this is actually kind of worse than Clockwork Celerity, because you can't use it to reload. At least Clockwork Celerity can be used to reload with the free action, but with this one, nope, only to strike. Ubiquitous Overdrive is just so much more fun as a level 20 feat. When you go into Overdrive, you select six willing allies. As long as they're within 30 feet of you while you Overdrive, they also get the damage bonus. They don't get the bonus damage from your class features, but you're level 20, they're probably getting five bonus damage on all attacks. And if you're in a big party, let's say you get to use this on all six willing allies, that's insane. Even if they all only hit once per turn, that's 30 extra damage every round for free. The biggest problem with this is that you need to have shared overdrive as a prerequisite, which means you need to also have overdrive allies. So this is a three feet investment, but if you're here for it, so am I. And that's it for Inventors. Oh boy, I'm actually really excited to talk about the Gunslinger, because I'm pretty sure that'll be a one-parter. I keep talking about all these fancy new classes like the Summoner, who also has Eidolons, and the Inventor, who also has Innovations, and it makes sense. But boy, there's a lot to talk about. But I know you guys love these chunky videos. I know I love the metrics from these chunky videos. So thank you all so very much for the watch time. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you would like to also support the channel and help me out, there's a link in the description. I appreciate all of you so much. I've been late getting the Patreon content out this month, but these guys are still here, still hanging out, and I appreciate all of you. I want to give a huge shout out to Moonlight Maps and their Atlas Kickstarter for sponsoring the channel. Once again, check out the link in the description and the pinned comment below. Go check them out. I want to see what they have to offer when it comes to that extra adventure, if we can hit that stretch goal. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Until next time, no nat ones.